Well, hello, and thanks for watching another episode of ARFCOM News, your twice-weekly dose of the finest 2A propaganda. Things are not looking up for everyone's favorite crackhead, Hunter Biden. Are you Hunter Biden? That's what my daddy tells me. After losing his sweet plea deal, which exempted him from even crimes he hasn't been charged with yet, he had to stand trial for lying about not being a crackhead on the background check form, which everyone has to fill out when buying a gun. And it's going to be pretty hard to deny he was using drugs because prosecutors revealed evidence that his leather handgun case was covered in cocaine. I can just imagine how pretty much everything within Hunter's reach is covered in a fine layer of cocaine. You can probably get high just riding in a car with him. Prosecutors also argue Biden can't use the Second Amendment because he was a prohibited possessor on account of his cocaine. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. Except you might remember back in August, we reported a federal appeals court ruled in U.S. versus Daniels that drug use does not invalidate a person's gun rights. Regardless of whether Hunter Biden is allowed to carry a gun legally, one thing is certain. He will be protected by men with guns for the rest of his life. But it would be impossible for us to produce quality 2A propaganda without sponsors, so it's time to pay some bills. Today's video is sponsored by TNVC.com, your source for bespoke artisanal non-GMO night vision products expertly forged by Amish craftsmen in the heart of a dying star. Hey friend, it's dark half the time on this planet. Unless you've got magic powers or a mountain of carrots, you're gonna need TMVC to see at nighttime the right way. Sig Sauer is out there being heckin' based again. If you're old enough, you might remember how Sig were the ones who kicked off the whole pistol brace thing in the first place. They partnered with SB Tactical to bring the first pistol braces to market way back in the day, and that started the ATF's neurotic waffling on whether braces were legal. As of right now, the ATF is prevented from enforcing their rule in the Fifth Circuit, but theoretically, maybe, are free to harass peaceable folks who own a brace in any other state. Most manufacturers and retailers are understandably unwilling to risk their existence and put their employees out on the street to sell braces, but SIG recently sent out a letter shared on X by Mr. Guns and Gear advising they will resume shipping firearms equipped with braces. Not only that, but they have offered to accept returns on the braces if the courts don't go our way. So that's cool, but what's worth noting here is that SIG wouldn't go out on a limb if they thought the ATF was going to win. Now, I'm not saying SIG lawyers have a DeLorean with a flux capacitor, but if I was a gambling man, I'd put my money on the SIG lawyers. What do you think? Is the brace rule going to survive its day in court? comment below. Control freaks are always whining that liberalized carry laws will lead to blood in the streets and wild west pimp style. That 21 year old pimp, that 21 year old pimp, roll on into any place you want and buy a gun under this provision and walk around in whatever way you want. No training, no understanding, wild west pimp style. And if you don't have the courage to stand up and say, Mr. Pimp, well, well, the most diabolical haters this side of the Mississippi. But crime keeps dropping in states that have recently passed permitless carry laws. Now, being a propagandist, I could spin that to mean more people carrying caused the crime rate to drop. And I'm sure it does, a bit, but crime has continued the same general downward trend in states like Florida that it's been doing since the 90s, and in most states, for that matter. We are not shrill wine box cat ladies. We are calm, rational folk. And the truth is, crime is a complex problem and carry laws don't really have a substantive effect on crime rates. Which means wine box cat ladies don't have to worry about Wild West pimps. Because just like every other state that passed permitless carry, Florida has not suffered a crime wave as a result. And whatever apocalyptic fever dreams the control freaks come up with to scare people about open carry, they're wrong about that too. 
Which is why I want you to pick up the phone right now and call Ron DeSantis and tell him to step up and keep his promise. Last year, he said he supports open carry in Florida. I've been very clear, uh, I support all of it. Now, if you look around the country, 25 states have concealed permitless carry, 37 states have unlicensed open carry. So the open carry is something that has been less of a big deal than the concealed carry. And in fact, Florida is one of only four states, California, Illinois, New York, Florida, and the District of Columbia, that do not allow any open carry at all. But the Republican House Speaker, Paul Renner, who DeSantis supported, by the way, killed HB 1619 so he could shield anti-gun Republicans in the Senate from having to go on record with a vote. Well, I'm a, I'm a supporter of the Second Amendment uh, across the board on many, on, in many aspects, but we're in the same legislature, same members we had last year. Um, I, mean, I support it personally, but, but I don't see, uh, we always have to measure was, whether it's worth the committee time, the House floor time to pass a bill that would be controversial. I love it when people say, I support the Second Amendment, but dot, dot, dot. Now, anytime you add the word but to the end of a statement, it completely invalidates everything that came before. For example, I don't want to offend you, but, or I'm not racist, but, or I'm not gay, but. Now you folks know that we don't focus on party politics here. We're about gun rights. I will point out party politics bullshit when I see it though. The Republican party controls both houses of the Florida legislature with a supermajority, and they hold the governor's office. They could pass this bill easily if they wanted. Every one of those Republican politicians claims to support gun rights. If these politicians want to appear pro-gun and run on a pro-gun image, they need to come through. Governors Greg Abbott of Texas and Brian Kemp of Georgia both called out their Republican legislators to pass real pro-gun constitutional carry bills. DeSantis has not done that. If he stays silent on HB 1619 and does not openly challenge the House Speaker to advance the bill, that shows voters that DeSantis is weak on the Second Amendment. Ah, weak, Lizzie. And now is not a great time for DeSantis to look weak on gun control. He is running for the highest office in the nation. So whether or not you live in Florida, I want you to call him at 850-488-7146 and urge him to lean on Speaker of the House Paul Renner and convince him to allow HB 1619 to have a vote. Or maybe you're not comfortable making phone calls while you're sitting on your thinking chair. So if you're already sitting there and you're not finished yet, please pause this video and post to DeSantis's X account. Tell him if he wants to have any chance in the primary, he cannot afford to look weak on gun rights now. Here's another story for the only ones professional enough files. Police in Elyria, Ohio, grenaded a baby while serving a warrant on the wrong house. They said they were trying to serve a warrant on a 14 year old boy for weapons charges. But even after they were told he hasn't lived there for months, they secured a warrant, put on their soldier lurping costumes and stormed the house in a bunched up gaggle that would make tween airsofters cringe. Now, if they were storming the right house and it was full of Nazi tweakers, I maintain that a no-knock dynamic entry is almost never the best way to apprehend a dangerous person. More professional police departments might surveil the house for days or weeks and capture the suspect when he leaves for groceries. If for some reason they really do have to make entry, that surveillance period will have given them the intelligence they need to know who's in the home and where they're likely to be so they don't throw a flashbang at a special needs baby. But that's exactly what these super troopers did. I'm not reporting on this because I like beating up on cops. I'm reporting this for two main reasons. First, these are the people that control freaks say are the only ones who can be trusted with weapons and they used weapons, which you're not allowed to purchase. Second, I want to point out, this is what they do to teenagers with vague weapons charges. So what do you think they're gonna do to your family if they think you have illegal pews? The real takeaway here is that this is the face of gun control. And, uh, and the uh, patient is on 10 years.
Our team is going to be in Vegas for SHOT Show all next week, so you won't get your regular 2A propaganda, but we will be posting multiple videos every day. You aren't likely to get notifications from YouTube, though, so be sure to check in on our channel so you don't miss anything. And of course, post down below and let us know what you want to see us cover. And now, for your moment of zen. Hey friends, do you like pews and pew related things? Do you want to know where you can get fly shirts like this and also help us keep delivering you pure uncut American pew propaganda at the low, low price of free money? Just go to shop.ar15.com. Guaranteed to make you every bit as handsome as me. And we literally couldn't pay the bills without our sponsors, so do us a solid and get yourself something nice from them. You deserve it. I love you.